the last time we were together, we began a look at Matthew chapter 24, where the disciples ask a series of questions. When will these things, the destruction of Jerusalem, be? What are the signs of your coming and the end of the age? Jesus is going to answer these questions. Now, the disciples may think they're asking one, but Jesus is answering, answering multiple questions. And he begins by talking about signs, earthquakes, wars, famine. But those are that is an answer to, well, the destruction of Jerusalem. As we pick up today, he is still answering that question about the destruction of Jerusalem. So let's begin at verse 15, Matthew 24, verse 15. Therefore, because of all these things we've just talked about, wars, rumors of wars, a rise of nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, uh, famines, earthquakes, because when those things are going on, because those things are going to go on, that's, that's not the end. That's just a sign that, that this is about to happen. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, which is spoken of through Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, let the reader understand, then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains. Whoever is on the housetop must not go down to get the things out that are in his house. And whoever is in the field must not turn back to get his garment. But what are those who are pregnant and those who are nursing babies in those days? But pray that your flight will not be in winter or on a Sabbath. For then there will be a great tribulation, such as not occurred since the beginning of the world until now, nor ever will. Unless those days have been cut short, no life would have been saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Then if someone says to you, Behold, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe them. For false Christ and false prophets will arise and will show great signs and wonders so as to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Behold, I have told you in advance. Therefore, if they say to you, Behold, he is in the wilderness, do not go out. Or behold, he is in their rooms, do not believe them. For just as the lightning comes from the east and appears even to the west, so will be the son of, coming of the Son of Man be. Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures would gather. We'll stop right there. Again. Jesus is answering the question about the destruction of the temple. The abomination of desolation was code for the Roman army. When that Roman army comes in, you know it's about to happen. So when you are in Judea, where Jerusalem is, flee to the mountains. Get out of there. Don't listen to people tell you that I have come back and I'm going to turn things around and, and I'm going to conquer the Romans. That's not what I'm about. That's not what this is about. Because my kingdom is different. That's the implication. So Jesus is saying, here's what's going to happen to Jerusalem. Here's what's going to happen in Judea. And it's going to be like nothing that has ever occurred before, comma, or after. So this isn't the end time. This isn't the end of the existence of the earth. This is about life in Judea around the year AD 70. And to kind of foreshadow what we're going to talk about, the tribulation that follows, the tribulation of those days, has to do with life in a conquered state. Not some time period after the righteous are raptured. But it's a time period of hardship for those who remain in Judea after the conquest, after the destruction of Jerusalem and the marching into the Roman army. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, we thank you so much for the blessings you give us. Father, I thank you for this day and I thank you for your word. Father, sometimes when we read your word and we're looking for answers, sometimes we, we see more than maybe is there. Father, help us to look at it simply, help us to look at it honestly, and help us to see that, that you are giving your people then warnings, and by giving them warnings, you're also reminding us that no matter the things that come our way, that we need to stay faithful to you. Father, I thank you for your church, your kingdom, which was established. Father, help us to be a part and an active part of that kingdom. 
standing side by side with each other and with you as we fight the good fight of faith. Thank you for Jesus, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for joining me and allowing me to join you as we spend time in God's Word. I do look forward to these messages, and I hope you do as well. Until the next time we're together, my prayer is, as always, that God will bless your day.